Hello everybody, I am Jaap H. And this is the second and last movie about the making of this painting called The Zebra Mirror. Um, there's another movie showing the beginning and I will sort of make a very short uh, rendering of that. And in this movie you can see what happened after that. Commercially bought, cheap, you know, paintings. You know, this is what the zebra uh, photographs look when they are glued together. And I looked at all the color combinations that have, have black in them uh, because the zebras are black and white. I like the purple for the, for the black stripes, but I don't like the, the red so much. The red is still there, but it's not nearly as dominant as the whole gestalt does not have that sort of butcher shop like atmosphere and you can see it looks quite differently you still recognize the zebras under it now this is looking a lot more dramatic um, than how it will come out what is the whole idea of a gansfeld uh, it's a german word means total field and so what the abstract expression is did was sort of often uh, fill the whole field, rather than uh, composing stuff. Uh, it's all a little bit too bland in terms of color, so I'm going to put a sort of a white accent in the middle. Softly, please. Yes, there we go. It now has the uh, Jackson Pollock uh, treatment, you know, sprinkling on different colors of paint. Uh, a little bit in the uh, palette that I chose originally. And now I'm going to take off all the cutouts and see what that does. So behold the present state of the zebra mirror. I have lost a little too much of the deep background here. Uh, and also there's something with the Pollock stripes and, and dots. But I think about it in a sense it's logical because uh, Pollock did a whole surface on a white background but without any figurative elements in the background. Now I had figurative elements, elements in the background and so the Pollock stripes I think do take away a lot from you know, your immediate interpretation of what you are seeing here. So what to do? Um, I think I lost a bit too much of the zebras here. I already sort of started, you know, bringing back some of the zebra stripes here and there. So I decided basically three things. Number one, tone down all the Pollock elements that are outside the zebra. Uh, and I hope they will bring back a bit more of the zebra impression. That's number one. Number two, there's blue background here behind the zebras. It's a bit like... I think it goes a bit like this uh, here and here also above the zebra's head and that of course on both sides there's a, sort of, there's a big blue um, surface here that sort of disappeared almost completely behind the whitewashing so uh, I will bring back that blue 
And then what I might do, I'm not quite sure yet, is take an acrylic uh, pen and sort of uh, accentuate the, um, the cutout shapes. I put back the blue uh, parts to uh, also bring back a bit more of the zebra silhouette. I sort of whited out or yellowed out the Pollock elements outside the zebra silhouette, uh, which was, you know, quite a bit of work because it didn't cover, so I had to do it three times. It still doesn't completely cover, but I sort of like that. I don't think, I think it's interesting to vaguely see what is behind it. Uh, there's still some echoes of blue and orange under this. If this painting is in your office or in your home, uh, you will look at it, either consciously or unconsciously, for quite a few hours. So it's, it's good to, you know, be able to discover new things in the painting. Uh, in the last phase of the other movie, I had this whole um, painting covered with cutouts. And many of these cutouts were in the form of animals, like this bear, like this sea animal, like this insect, like this bird, for instance. And then I applied my usual whitewash uh, over the zebras. Uh, and of course, the cutouts were left out from the whitewash. So here we had the original print, then the next layer was my painting over the zebras, then the next, la next layer were the cutouts, then the next layer was whitewashing and Pollock dripping. The problem was that the whitewashing had gone so thick that it was almost impossible to recognize the zebras. What I ended up doing was toning down a lot of the um, Pollock drips because they were too prominent, especially in these two yellow areas here. And, you know, bringing back some of the stripes, all basically in order to restore some of the zebra image. Uh, it's one of those situations where I go, oh, what is the corner I painted myself on this time? But the thing is, I know I always find a solution, and that's, of course, part of creativity. You know, running into a problem, finding a solution. So after all that, I took a marker with acrylic ink or acrylic paint, I don't know how to call it exactly, and I accentuated all these cutouts. And I decided to do the ones, the parts on the zebras with white and the part outside the zebras with red, again to uh, enhance the zebra image. That was a bit difficult because you know, this surface is very uneven uh, and when I was drawing with the acrylic uh, markers on it, it, it sort of looked like amateurish. It didn't look like, you know, chum, expressive. It looked more like awkward administrative, actually. So uh, then I, I slept on it several nights because I didn't really know how to solve that. And I ended up getting oil pastels and sort of drawing over the um, uh, acrylic uh, lines. Then I did white over the white and red over the black. Uh, because I thought I had more to do, more, it was more expressive. What exactly did I end up expressing here? Because I started with two commercial uh, prints of zebras. Well, that certainly was no expression of mine. And I think, actually, now that I look at it, for me, this all symbolizes sort of like the ebb and flow of life. The famous therapist Bert Hellinger has says, life comes and life goes. Uh, organisms, like people, are born and they die. But also plants and pretty much every other organism comes and goes. So, logically speaking, uh, there must be something that's more important than life. I've always found that an in intriguing saying.
So this is now the ebb and flow of life as seen in the zebra mirror. Until the next time when we will paint some more.